my lamp is dying, which is actually kind of fitting because this video is going to be about letting go, specifically about the five biggest mistakes that I see people make when it comes to letting go. Throughout the videos I've made, I've seen so many wonderful comments from people and a couple terrible ones too, but I've also seen a lot of comments from people who I think on some level have sort of not completely understood what letting go is about, what detachment is about. So the very first point that I want to talk about is people sort of unfortunately misunderstanding what letting go actually means. And I've had lots of people leave comments asking me, lots of people emailing me, I want to let go of this thing. How do I let go of this? How do I move on from this? And letting go at its very core is not really something you need to add to your life. Think about it. Letting go is the absence of clinging. And truthfully, the action of that letting go is very often automatic. The essence of what it means to let go, to detach in this way, is to see more clearly. That is the only thing you really need to do, to see where you're holding on in life, what your motivation is, what's actually driving your behavior, where you're not accepting yourself, where you're rejecting yourself, where you're stuck, where you're holding on, where you're angry with yourself or the world. These are things that we very often like to bottle up and shove into the closet somewhere. And we don't want to deal with them. And then almost everything we do in our life is to try to compensate in some way. So we go around accumulating wealth, responsibilities, reputation, relationships. We do everything we can to build ourselves this tower of cards that we sort of in our insecurity fragilely stand atop. So as long as you believe that a relationship is what defines you and what has given you purpose and, and validation is the only thing that's ever made you happy, if I just say, okay, well, how do I let go of that relationship? It's to see that, okay, that's not actually true. It's sort of true from a certain perspective. But if we step back on a deeper level, this has been a sort of compensation mechanism for an inner insecurity, an inner lack. And so letting go of the relationship has to do with seeing what the relationship actually was. And I think that this is perhaps why people don't understand this or, or look for letting go as a method, a, a thing you need to add to do. Because we're so used to that in this building of this giant tower of cards. Go do this, achieve this, get the next thing. And looking at that tower of cards is terrifying. It requires us to see who and what and where we are in life. So we've defined that at its core for the sake of our discussion today. Letting go is about seeing clearly. Detachment is about seeing clearly. It's not about forcibly trying to get rid of things. And that brings us to the second way in which I see people sadly misunderstand what I mean when I talk about letting go. And this comes from people who are very internally hurt, often following a breakup. I've had people ask me, is there a point in relationships? Yes, there's a huge point in relationships. Relationships are wonderful. There's so many reasons to connect with people. When I say in these videos that you need to go inward, discover yourself, understand yourself, empower yourself, it's not so that you can live alone in the woods. And I'll get the occasional comment, swearing off dating forever, you know, oh, I just need to never talk to those people again. They're not worth your time. They'll also phrase these comments occasionally as if they are agreeing with what I've said in the video. Like, yeah, you're right, we should never date again. And that is n certainly not what I am saying. And what this perspective has to do with is people who are desperately hurt inside, very badly, and they feel so heartbroken, so grief-stricken, so overwhelmed with that pain that they tell themselves, never again. They have a part of themselves that feels so hurt that a protector comes in and says, never again will we feel this, we're going to push this away, never try again, never do that again. So. To somebody like that, you might view letting go of a relationship as letting go of the need for connection. From my perspective, this is just my perspective, that is incredibly damaging and, crucially, it is not based on, as we said, seeing things as they are. That's based on our own insecurity, our own judgment, our own fears, and our own 
pain and trying to avoid that. And so you'll see people who say, I want to let go of this relationship. I want to get back to normal. Seeing clearly means to look at all this stuff, to understand it, to understand yourself. And what we tend to want to do, as soon as our crutch, as soon as whatever's supporting us in a given scenario goes away, we feel a lot of pain. And then we say, I want to let go of that pain. And that brings us to the third thing, which is that people often mistake letting go as about getting rid of negative emotions. I can just let go of all my fear, my anxiety, my doubt, and then I'll be great. It's great to want to heal, to want to move through that space and understand yourself better. That's wonderful. A lot of the time when people ask me these questions or leave comments about this, or even the things I've seen other people make YouTube videos about from time to time, there's an underlying subtext that letting go might mean cutting away. I want to let go of my insecurities, people will say. I want to let go of my fears. That's great. I'm sure you do. But really, there's an aspect of inner rejection in there, where part of you is desperately judging another part of you. Which means you're probably, back to point one, not quite seeing it for what it is. You're seeing it through a lens of judgment that was likely instilled to you early on in your life, where you said, this part of me is not good enough or doesn't live up to certain standards, and I need to change it, I need to make sure it doesn't get shown, and this part of me, which keeps it in line, is the one I have to rely on, even though it's a bit of a bully and it tells me that I'm not good enough all the time. So really, if I could get rid of this weakness, that would be great. If I could just let go of those parts of me. And this is a sad misunderstanding because you can see it sort of perpetuates that loop. Because in a way, if I'm trying to let go aka push parts of me away, then I'm really creating further internal conflict rather than internal clarity. I am hiding parts of myself rather than looking at them. And as we talked about, seeing things as they are is very painful, very challenging sometimes because of this. If we look at those patterns within ourselves and understand where they come from, at first we might feel like, oh my gosh, I'm a failure. Everybody's going to leave me. I'm a loser. This is terrible. And we don't want to feel that. So we say, well, if I could just let go of all that stuff, that'd be great. What lies behind that? Where are those things coming from in your past, in your psyche, the stories you tell yourself about yourself? All of that flows together. And if you don't look at it to understand where it's coming from, then at best, we're just trying to slap a band-aid on things. And that brings us to the next big mistake I see, which is that people come to letting go as a thing they need to do. And the mistake I see is people trying to let go on a timeline or to let go as a prescribed course of action. I'm going to let go because of this. And this is a problem because it it presumes an outcome that has already been decided. And a big part of letting go is seeing clearly, which means letting go of your outcome. So if I go into a situation saying I need to let go of everything by Friday, then I'm already holding on to an idea that I've imagined which Friday will be different than it is right now. Stay with me, this might get a little vague for a second, but there is a, a me I believe myself to be all the things I want, all the ways I see the world, my doubts, my insecurities, my hopes, my dreams, everything I've been taught and enculturated to believe. So we have this, this me. Now this me has parts of it that it doesn't like. The things we've talked about in these previous points, right? Emotions or patterns or the people we've, we've had in our life that we still are attached to and we want to let go, right? So this bundle of me looks at itself and says, well, I would be better off if I could cut some parts of me off and, you know, toss them aside. Letting go is to see this whole thing. Remember that house of cards I talked about at the very beginning, right? That's sort of what this is. We've built our ideas of ourselves, of the world, who we think we are. All of our, our stuff, our stories about ourselves into this massive construct. And then we are continually comparing that with everybody else and trying to cut off the parts of us that aren't so good and, and grab on to new things that are better and add them to our accumulated self. 
this whole process is essentially the opposite of true letting go because it relies on us blindly going through life thinking that accumulating ideas about ourself is meaningful. When you see clearly, that's kind of a ridiculous thing because your entire being is right now. Think about that for a second, if you would. Your entire life is right now. You might think, well, yes, I have a past and a future, but everything about you is here right now watching this video, right? Your entire being. But we so often don't think about it like that. We think about ourselves as spread out and thus an accumulation of facts, things, ideas, stuff. This might all sound kind of esoteric, so let me wrap this back around. At its core, letting go is a process of surrender, of realizing that we don't necessarily understand this whole bundle of thoughts, feelings, desires, everything that we thought we've wanted our whole life. It's not about subjugating parts of yourself or judging parts of yourself. In fact, that's almost the opposite of letting go. And that brings us to the fifth and final mistake I see people make. And this is really sort of an overarching theme for everything we've talked about in this video. It's less of an individual mistake, but more perhaps the core of these mistakes. And it's thinking of letting go as a choice-based process. Ultimately, you cannot choose what you let go. You can only choose to start the process of seeing, because then you will understand that almost nothing of what you identified with is anything you ever had. And the reason that this confusion exists is because we tend to think so much in our culture of things to add, things to build, that very first topic we talked about, where we're constantly trying to build more, to add more, and letting go is seeing that most of that is sort of not real. We're changing our ideas of ourselves. We're constantly reevaluating our our concept of ourself. And letting go is about understanding that this massive blob of beliefs, of ideas, of identifications, of stories, of accumulated knowledge is incredibly useful. This is what you might call the ego, the ego self. It's incredibly useful, don't get me wrong. Very helpful in our day-to-day -day life. It's not a bad thing. But when we identify with it, the ego then latches on to letting go and says, okay, I can make myself better. Now I just need to let go of the bad parts of me and I'll be even better and it'll be great. I'll be the nicest, most let go, detached person around. And then I won't have to feel anything and I won't have to struggle and I'll be more attractive. It'll be great. When we approach letting go from that standpoint, it's very tempting, so don't judge yourself if you've done that. But when we approach letting go from that place, we are missing the point. We are caught in the trap all over again. Because really, the truth about letting go is there's barely anything that you can hold on to. I'm gonna end this video with a story from the book Awareness by Anthony DeMello, which is a great book, by the way. I'll put a link in the description. There's a disciple one day who goes and seeks out the master and he says, Master, I would like to discover freedom. And the master says, freedom, all right. Well, tell me who is holding you back, who's binding you? And the disciple thinks about it for a second. He says, I'm gonna go meditate on it. He meditates for a whole week and comes back and he says, I don't think anybody's holding on to me. And the master says, well, what do you want freedom for? And the disciple got it. He understood in that moment. People come after a relationship. How do I let go of my ex? Are you physically holding them? They're gone. What you're holding on to is an idea. It's an internal story relating to other stories about yourself. Well, I don't believe I'm good enough and this person made me feel good enough, so I really want them back in my life so I feel good enough, okay? Well, letting go then is about parsing that out. Well, it's really nothing to do with your ex at all. Toss that out it has to do with why didn't you feel good enough in the first place? Once again, not that relationships are a bad thing. Not at all. They're wonderful. Please don't avoid them. That's the other thing, right? Using letting go to cut off the parts of ourselves, to hide. It's not that either. There's a lot of nuance because it's not really a thing that is positively defined. It is just the absence of clinging. What does it mean to cling? Figure that out. Gotta look at yourself. Gotta ask, where am I clinging? Only you can do it. I can't tell you how to let go of your things. I can't even really point out where you're clinging because it's you, not me. The first and perhaps only action is to have the courage to look 
for yourself. That might sound a little esoteric. I apologize if this video was a little bit more flowery than my normal stuff, but I think it's important to understand that we so often overcomplicate these things. We so often twist them into just exercises and, and, and concepts, things on a piece of paper or a spreadsheet, just tasks to do, more repetition. We make them mechanical. And we forget that the essence of letting go, the essence of life is to be here, to be now, to be aware, to feel the air in your lungs, the blood in your body, the, the heartbeat, and ex embrace your present reality, embrace your presence where you are. And we're so often caught up from this perspective, from our, our me, of judging that, of disliking it, of trying to change it, modulate it, change, 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 always get more, always be different, that we're never here. And then our life is over and we have never lived. And I'm not perfect at this by any means, but I think the opportunity of letting go, of truly looking, truly seeing, truly understanding where we are and our massive bundle of self-judgment, self-criticism, illusion, we stick ourselves in traps. And much like that disciple, often there's no one actually keeping us there except for us. If you want to learn a little bit more, then check out this video I made about detachment and what we get wrong about detachment. It's similar, but a little distinct. Also, I made it a couple years ago, so there's a chance that it clashes with what I just said because I have learned and grown over that time. Aside from that, thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.